Hey guys, so this video is just going to be about how you're going to sweep net or do field collecting and a couple things that we're going to be going over is what you should bring with you on any of your insect collecting adventures, how you would sweep net, using your kill jar, how you would catch butterflies, some places where you could find some pollinators, and then a little conglomeration of some things that I found sweep netting and then at the end you guys get to enjoy the bloopers. So you can click on the outline right there and skip to any part of this video. Hey guys, so we're going to do a collecting video so you guys get to follow me around in the bot gardens and behind my apartment and possibly my friend's house. A couple things that you want to bring, and by a couple I mean a bunch of things that you want to bring before you go out, uh, include a bag. I like bags with lots of pockets. So there's plenty of places to put stuff. I like bringing a pencil case so when I store insects they uh, don't get squashed in my bag and I don't come home with a bag full of squash endeavors. You obviously need a net to catch your insects. I also bring these little beading bags so I can put individual insects in them and then date and label where I got them for all that collection information that you have to put on your labels. I often bring a couple of vials just so I can put some insects in if my kill jar gets full or I run out of bags. You have a backup of where to put stuff and they'll be preserved in the uh, ethyl alcohol. I often bring a container if I want to bring live insects home. This is cool if you find like some cool aquatic ones or if you find a mantis and you can bring a bigger container. I bring my kill jar, which looks fancy and expensive but really isn't. Um, you can get them from BioQuip and they'll often send you ethyl acetate to soak the bottom with. So you want to do that before you go out so it's charged and so you actually kill your insects with it. If you don't have one of these super fancy jars, you can use a mason jar and just put a cotton ball filled with uh, acetone or nail polish remover and just let it sit for a few minutes. Um, I bring, uh, well, a lot of people use these little paper triangles to collect butterflies with and there's like paper, really, and they're just paper that are really simply folded into a triangle to collect your butterflies. I often bring my cameras because I want to take pictures of cool stuff that I find outside. I bring a crowbar, a little mini one so you can hack apart logs or bark. You don't need one bigger than this because if this can't get through your dead log, then the log won't have anything in it anyway because it's not decomposed enough. I bring water to stay hydrated. I also bring bug spray so the other bugs that I don't like for instance, like ticks, don't try and munch on me. Um, it is always a good idea to wear pants like I'm not doing, especially if you kind of go out and into the brush where there's like thorns and other such dangers. And then finally, I bring my field guides so I can look up cool things that I see or know if what I'm collecting is something that I actually want to bring back with me. So that's pretty much your basic collecting kit if you go out for a few hours to collect stuff. Alright, so to sweep net, you'll take an area that's kind of grassy or you can sweep net on flowers too, but basically you're just going to walk and just swish your net back and forth through the grass. And you're going to think that you might not find very much, but you'd actually be surprised how much stuff you can actually get. And when you're done, you're going to flip the end of your net over the top to you trap whatever you were supposed to get. Okay, so if you don't have all your stuff out of your bag right away, to prevent stuff from walking all the way to the front, you can just kind of go super quickly like this, flip the end of your net over, and grab it. And then all of your insects will be at the very bottom. So then, what you can do, because you obviously don't want them to escape, and you want as much stuff as possible, you can take a Ziploc bag, I like the kind that have the uh, sliders because I can't close the other kind. You're going to open it up, you're going to take your net full of stuff, and you're going to push it through the other side, and you're going to take it 
you're gonna push it through. If you're worried because you have stinging things, they usually can't sting you through the net. So once you get most of the net into the bag, you're going to push it all the way to the bottom, shake it out a bit, close the bag mostly on the net so nothing can get out, shake it around a bit more, Hopefully all of your net comes undone. If not, you can take a stick or your hand and push it the rest of the way. Out. And slide it out. And close your bag. So I've looked in this bag and in this bag alone we have at least three families of beetles including a ladybug and a weevil. Uh, aphids which are their own families, two families of plant hoppers including the membracids or this is the buffalo tree hopper. Uh, we have a family of true bugs in here or the thread-legged bugs. We have an ant which is its own family and a bee which we would have to let, take a picture of and look at it a bit more closely. So I did some more sweeping and I got a bee this time. As you can tell, it's grumpy. So if you get a bee or a wasp like this and you are afraid to handle it, you can take out your kill jar. You're going to open the lid up. You're going to shake this guy as far down to the bottom as possible put him in and put the lid on the top and this will ensure that he will stop moving around pretty soon. So as you can see he's maybe stopped moving around and is no longer angrily buzzing so this is a good strategy for killing large things that you are afraid of. Another viable strategy if you have a really big angry wasp and just putting your hand down here is a little bit too scary you can hold your net up like this a lot of insects have the instinct to walk towards the top of whatever they're entrapped in, and that's another good way of being able to get them more calmly to the top of where you want them and put it in your filter. So here we have a little sulfur butterfly, and I'm going to try and catch it. Um, with the net, you can sometimes push them out of the air because they're really light and fluffy, so this can watch me and laugh as I try and catch this thing. Alright, that's how you catch a butterfly. See it's frantically twitching in the net in the net. I'm going to keep this guy to show you guys how to spread, but um, while he's doing this he is kind of ruining his scales, so you know I'm gonna try and calm him down as best as possible. You can pinch them in the net like that and bring your net across, stick your hand in, and you can grab him by the thorax. You can pinch, you can pinch their wings at the thorax to prevent them from uh, flying or uh, twitching their wings to break them and so you can do that I prefer not to because it makes me sad <laughs> so I'm gonna put him in a plastic bag uh, or you could put them in the triangles that you guys get and then I'll put them in the freezer as soon as I get home and then spread him as soon as possible and I'll make a video about how to spread spread him and so in the bag he can't uh, damage his wings which is the whole purpose of snapping their wings in the first place and so this way he can't move them he won't damage the scales and so uh, he'll be he'll be a really nice addition to your collection so big cherry blossom trees are also a really good place to find insects you'll usually find lots of things pollinating it so here's a honeybee up here, somewhere. Oh. 
Hopefully you can see his big pollen basket. And by him, I mean her. Probably a chrysomelon. Oh wow, look at this guy. A little jumping spider. Huge, you can see all his eyes. Cool, huh? This guy is most likely a Nabidae. And he's super cool. With the net, you can sometimes push them out of the air because they're really light and fluffy. So this, you can watch me and laugh as I try and catch this thing. We have two families of plant hoppers, including the uh, membracids or the, I don't actually don't know what their common name is. Start over. Stick the thread leaded. Start over. Sorry. Are the bugs in focus when you put them in? When you put the camera in? No idea. The lip triangles, as they're affectionately called. And so the whole air inside the jar gets nice and chemically, so it kills your insects pretty quickly. So there's some wasps over there, and I'm going to go and try and get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 